Okay, the reason why there's a problem with running platens on someone who's uh, clearing course platen on someone who's uh, OT2 is that when you do that, you start to re-stimulate the composite case, but then you cannot handle the composite case because, first of all, you shouldn't have, have that information, and even if you have, you're now mixing levels. You're jumping around, and how on standard approach you do, you just, you know, you build a house, and then you, you start to build a second floor before the foundations are even set in, and then after the foundation are half done, you decide to put the plumbing, and you do half the plumbing, then you do half the electrical, and then you go back, and then you finish a foundation, you remove part of it, and then you, you prepare the ground under it, you have the house that will probably collapse, or will be at at the very best, the house will be a lot less good than it could be done. I mean, if you're satisfied with this, well, I can only say I pity you. I mean, if you're satisfied with eating at a greasy spoon, when for the same amount of effort and money, uh, eating at a five-star restaurant is available, if that's your understanding of how you should lead your life, that you're satisfied to drive a broken down geo that has the engine that is nearly ruined and if you feel it satisfying over brand new Rolls Royce for the same price, well, fine, you have entirely different standards than I have and most same people I know. Um, to go back to the clearing course, if you run that, you're going to re-stimulate the composite case and then you don't have the tools to handle. You are, instead of handling one thing at a time, you're handling a whole bunch of things. You enter a whole bunch of new variables and something works in any field, and I've done customer support for years or work in engineering fields or computer, advanced computing, um, debug, or uh, uh, computer programming, that the only way you can be truly effective and not squander your resources to do one thing at a time thoroughly. And if you try to solve a problem by having a whole bunch of things have done, you sometimes you might be lucky and then fix it quick. Most of the time, you're just going to not solve the problem, and then it's not going to be done right. And I can talk to you about how it's done in a corporate world, and in a corporate world, time is money. When you support computers that deals with the world markets, and where every minute of downtime is calculated in millions of dollars, then you better know how to solve problem and I can tell you if you don't if you have a half hazard or half has approach to solving problem they will give you your pink slip before you can do anything else. So in the field of handling clearing course platens it is there is something completely unusual. And again People tend to fixate on the unusual. Whenever there is verbal data, people, they don't fixate on what's right, they fixate on what's wrong. Why? Because there is a lie, and this is what persists. If it as is, they wouldn't see it. Like there's a guy in a free zone, he's fixated that every acceptable success must have huge rave comments about him. And if he, and he actually evaluates tremendously for his species. The fact is this, the ultimate auditing, the auditor would be as is. Therefore, the auditor, he would not even be mentioned. And I have some very good example. There was this guy, he, he had the most amazing wins of his life at testing to his solo setups and having completed that advanced program. He, he couldn't believe it, he was doing so great. He wrote this incredible 10 page success story and then after that he, he realized half an hour later the auditor, myself, was nowhere mentioned. He came to apologize, hey I didn't see, I didn't write about you and I said that's the only fine because I had been as is. Same thing, when Arian Jackson started to talk about her auditors and how nasty and bad they were, she started to talk about a bunch of them, Shoup, uh, Miriam State, Mountain Gelf, and uh, a whole bunch of them. 
Alec Korzynski and all that, and she, Paula Zuli, and she talked about a whole bunch of them, and she never talked about me, because I took it to see that my thing had been good enough, that had been as is, and that's actually the way it should be. So therefore, this concept of verbal tech is, it's the lie persists, and this is why people get fixated on doing what's wrong instead of fixated on what's right. And this is why, um, this is one of the reasons for rejecting verbal tech. Another reason for rejecting verbal tech is simply that verbal tech is not defined by saying it verbally. That's misunderstanding. The way Hubbard defined it is providing any form of tech that is contrary to what is written in the bulletin, HOPs, or tapes. In other words, if you give advice that is against the tech, whether it's written, whether it's spoken, whether it's transmitted by any other means, it is verbal tech. If you explain something correctly, without interpretation and ensure that you have full duplication that it is not entering any new concept, new ideas or opposite ideas to a tech, then that would not be verbal tech. The fact is very few people are capable of doing that. In my own experience, only extremely high trained people can do that and not even all the time they would even not provide verbal tech. And it has been found also that if the tech, all the principles of the tech are very much written uh, in bulletins, um, it has been adequate in most times to train people just on those bulletins because the evils of providing verbal tech supplant the benefits of over permissiveness over allowing verbal tech to take place. Therefore, the and you have two issues on verbal tech is you have the October 75 bulletin of technical queries. He says it's mortal to ever explain something. And the best example was FNs. Auditors, they were simply told the bulletin, and this was done to me as well. You don't understand what FNs are, and you ask for clarifications, and then the, you even get mad at a cramming officer because all he tells you is to read and store it, and you get word cleared, and falls it a strip or whatever else on the FNs, but nobody tells you anything that's not covered in a bulletin. And this is an example of what gets done in a way of verbal tech currently in the churches, they have altered complete definition of NFN. And the way they've done that is simple, is they have um, taken out of context a quote from L. Rich. In 79, L. Rich wrote something in answer to a particular situation. And you see, what happened is Elrich would give comment on a whole bunch of things and put them on a dictaphone. Then people would cut those out and then put this, okay, this one is about FSO plans, this one is about Division 6, this one is about upper management, this one is about Amsterdam Org, this one is about this, this, because Elrich was micromanaging everything. So then they cut his orders or his uh, advices to put them in different areas. And then, but what happened is, then sometimes they can lose the context into which an order is given. And then they take it sweeping generally, like if it's total gospel applying to every case. Then he says, then when he, he gives given a critique of a tape, um, you know, he sees a tape and then he does a critique of it, he sees that there's some false data on the FN and the auditor indicate an FN that wasn't one. And then he says it should be back and forth, back and forth because the auditor was taking some other characteristics as an FN. But what they say, ah, they take this, then they put it in the uh, when they publish the book of image drill, they look at anything that always said on FNs, and then they take that little quote out of context and put it in the book. Then, later on, they say, ah, you see what it says? FN or this. Therefore, if an FN doesn't go back and forth twice on each side, it cannot be an FN. Verbal tech. There's no such reference anywhere. And it 
it defines a definition of an FN. This is a person FN. This is not an FN, that new oddball definition. But of course, Miscavige and his uh, people of similar work, uh, they saw that this is a good idea because if you do sex checking, this is the one only thing you want person FNs on because there is no way possible to pers have a person FN and still have some type of whittle in the area of your sex check. It is simply impossible. You might FN briefly, and you might FN on a question, even though the area is not entirely clean. But there's no way on, on the inhale that you can be entirely clean in that area and have a person FN. And this has become now the ultimate control tool because with the RPF program being the EP is you have some questions that check with disagreements on kind of thoughts about senior management and if you don't have a person FN on this then you don't graduate. Therefore you have to be brainwashed, broken and brainwashed to graduate the RPF. That's exactly what it means. And to go back to that subject of person FN or uh, FNs, they have the ultimate verbal tech. They've invented this meter simulator, and that meter simulator show an FN or a read like a rock slam. And what is insidious is that while it might be good to show what one looks like, it gets reinterpreted that unless it looks exactly like that, it's not an FN or it's not a rock slam. Therefore, there are continually FNs not being indicated because they do not look exactly like that one and in fact uh, Miscavige has perverted a text to such a degree that this is this rule that is invented is not more important than the Archer Code. The Archer Code says it's an Archer breach to overrun an FN or to not indicate the FN when it should be indicated and there is one. Now he says it's a false report and therefore a suppressive act to in to write FN when it is not an FN, and he has now redefined FN, therefore, any author can be destroyed and expelled if he doesn't comply that rule, which is actually the ultimate control mechanism, because now you're going to declare suppressive anyone because they have made a mistake, and this is the ultimate control tool.